It doesn't matter what you speak about. As long as it fits into your main mission and supports your goal, it is tailored to your audience and their goals, you stick to one basic theme or angle. For example, if your workshop is all about how to create a business plan, it would actually weaken your lesson if you suddenly went off on a tangent and began speaking about setting up autoresponders or how to hire the best bookkeepers. If you get a question that's not relevant to the subject, acknowledge the question. That's a good question. And firmly table it to another time that won't disrupt the presentation. Here are three ways to gracefully turn the conversation back to business. Be sure to remind me after the presentation, during the question and answer period. However, we don't have time to cover that in this presentation. Speak to me after the presentation and I'll point you to some resources. But we're here today to speak about Adobe Photoshop, so unfortunately we need to keep to that topic. Gauge your audience. Remember that you are only half the event. Your audience completes it. Together, you make the event become an entity in its own right, with a soul and a persona. It can be absolutely magical to see this transformation, as if the event comes alive and you're just there to facilitate. Each speaking engagement will feel different because your audience will be different. Learn to read their moods and needs, and you can be as direct as you please. How to craft a talk that sells. There's a specific process for coming up with a strong presentation. All of these elements should be present, even if you mix them up into an order that feels more natural to you. 1. Define your topic and angle. 2. Analyze your audience. What does your audience need? What are they there for? 3. Analyze their communication style. Will they respond better to a dry, technical presentation? To humor? Anecdotes? Fast-paced? Are they visual learners? Will metaphors turn them off or help them better understand your points? 4. Write your skeleton. The key points you have to cover to get from beginning to end. 5. Think of new original ways to cover these points. Is there new information you can share? A unique shortcut? Powerful resources to introduce them to? A revolutionary approach? 6. Look for ways to connect emotionally with your audience. What will make them set up? Visualize themselves in your place. See you in their place. 7. Decide what visual aids you are going to use. Handouts, slideshows, PowerPoint presentations. Ask yourself, why? Is this the best way to show this point? Will it break their concentration or perk them up? 8. Write your introduction. Remember to make it dynamic. 9. Write your conclusion. Make sure it includes a call to action, your request for referrals, an invitation to sign up for your next event, or fill out a short survey, etc. If possible, refer to your opening in your conclusion for maximum impact, completing the circle. And, if possible, finish with a rousing, positive, feel-good statement they can carry away with them. 10. Fill in the middle. At this point, this will probably feel like the easiest part. 11. Proof your speech. Print it out and read it aloud, at least three times. 12. Notice where your tongue trips over words and rewrite that sentence or section. 13. Practice until the speech fits you like a glove. How to position yourself so they're eager to pay you. It's good to be vulnerable and human. But if you want to be seen as a catch worth paying good money in the world of public speaking, there are definite do's and don'ts. 1. Never ever apologize for being there. You'd be surprised the number of people who begin presentations by saying self-depreciating things like, I've no idea why so-and-so asked me to speak about coffee makers, but here I am. 2. Don't use jargon. No one wants to hear about inferred primordial abundances unless they are physicists. And if you use an acronym, let people know what it means the first time you use it. Now, RADA, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, maintains that 
Using jargon is akin to putting your audience to sleep. And if you've attracted international audience members, which happens more than you think, if you're presenting online, you may totally confuse them. 3. Never worry about looking good. Instead, eagerly anticipate sharing. 4. Deliver more than they expect. Whether that's new insider information, a fresh outlook that finally helps them make sense of a difficult subject, handouts, or free samples, make sure you pack as much focused value as you can into your presentation. All aim to thrill your audience, make your host look good, they're the heroes that brought you in. 5. Eliminate the ums and ahs. Recording yourself is the best way to identify what your particular annoying filler noises and phrases are. For instance, when I first heard myself speak on tape, I was appalled at how many times I said, basically, I don't think I've said it since. Once you've identified them, do your best to erase them from your speeches. 6. Be dependable. Arrive on time, check out the location in advance, if it's a physical location. Don't depend on your hosts for extra equipment. Have everything you need with you, or else have a backup plan. And never, ever cancel if you can help it. 7. Realize you're being paid for your perceived value. Not just your experiences and expertise. If you're speaking about Barbie dolls to an accountant's convention, your perceived value might easily be zero, and nobody would know or care who you are. If you're speaking to the Barbophiles of San Fernando Valley, however, and they are excited by the fact that you're the original designer of the Francie wig, your perceived value may be priceless. Similarly, if you're the one person whose talk can boost productivity in a failing department almost immediately by 30%, you'll also be priceless. While people naturally want guests who are celebrities, most are quite aware their budgets won't stretch to Bill Clinton, who, when last heard of, commanded 150000 for a one-hour speaking engagement. They want someone who is well-respected in their niche, dependable, and available, simply being willing to speak and doing so in a professional, enjoyable manner automatically positions you as a niche leader and expert. You'll build your reputation more quickly than you think. One day, I wasn't a speaker at conferences, and then I was. Chris Brogan